Now, I was a short hitter before avoiding these three movements. And once I did that, I went from carrying my driver from 240 yards to 275 yards plus. So these are gonna make a huge difference to your game, make you longer, let's get into it. So the first one here, really, really simple. And that is your ball position and tee height. So what I was doing, this is what so many amateurs do, is I was having the ball tee down way too low to where the none of the ball at all was above that club face. And I had my ball position in between middle and left foot. So just really not far enough forward. And then that would really make me hit down on the golf ball every single time, if not just completely level. Now, top touring professionals can get away with that because they have club head speed to be able to still hit the ball a decent distance while sitting down. You don't out there. You need to give yourself help. The only way you would ever be able to hit slightly up on the golf ball, it'll probably only be a degree or two with this tee height and ball position, is if you excessively side bend in the downswing to help that club travel a little bit more up, which can rob you of speed, which is on this video too. So what you need to do, you need to give yourself a little bit more chance rather than hitting these really low, really short drives that so many amateurs do. And that is get that ball teed up for one. So I wanna see golfers with that tee at least half that ball above the club face. Yes, at least half the ball. And I wanna see you with that ball position on the inside of your left foot. You immediately doing that is gonna make you hit way more knee up without you even trying to. So this immediately gave me a ton of yardage, tons of yardage. This was at least about 20 yards worth of the yardage out of the gains I got. So that much difference. I went from hitting it low to then high and it stayed in the air for longer. So tee that ball up higher, play around with it and do this little procedure here. Sit up to the golf ball, have your feet really, really close together, ball right in the middle of the two feet. Have the tiniest step of your left foot, big step of your right. If you wanna have a little gap between club and ball, that's very useful as well to help you hit even more on the up and then go from it from there and you're gonna be hitting the ball way further for it. So the second move I avoided that turned me from a shorter hitter to a bigger hitter, and that was all to do with my left heel. So what I used to do, I used to lift up that left heel in the backswing, which is absolutely fine. That gives you a lot more range of motion to have a bigger turn, increases your distance. But from there, it would take me forever to get that left heel back down onto the ground again. So if I'm not getting that left heel back down on the ground, I pretty much make that move of lifting up the left heel almost useless other than the turn benefits. Because lifting up that left heel, slamming it back down, that primes you then to get into the ground and then come back out again, which increases your vertical force, which increases club head speed. And because it would take me to around shaft parallel to the ground to get that down onto the ground again, I now don't have any time to push back out, back out again because I'm already at the golf ball. So it's, again, this is something so common I see with golfers. They'll lift up their left heel and they'll almost still have that left heel up by the time they're at impact to where they'll be on their toes the entire time. I normally see a golfer early extend doing this as well. So this is where what I had and what me and my coach were working on was getting that left heel and feel like it's slamming down before I've even completed my backswing. So that would obviously be a little bit of an exaggerated thought, but some players out on tour do that move, John Rahm being one of them, and that straight away got that left heel down, and then I could sequence up my vertical movement coming through the golf ball again, and that would immediately give me some more distance. So I'm really slamming that heel down before I get to the top of my backswing, almost feeling it mid-backswing, and now sequence it in transition for the extreme feel. So let's hit one here. And again, that immediately added some more distance to my driver. We always gotta find these power leaks in your game of why you're not hitting the ball as far as you could. And there was certainly a ton in my game, and that was one of them. Getting that left heel, getting back down again in the downswing, and it's one that you've always got to look at for your golf swing. So the third move that I avoided that turned me from a short hitter to a big hitter, and that was getting rid of excessive side bends. So we talked about that a little bit in the first with ball position and tee height. It's the only way you can really hit slightly up on it by having the tee too far down and ball position too far back. And that's certainly where a little bit of this stemmed from, from me, this excessive side bend. Now we know we want to have side bend coming into the shot with driver to help you hit up on the golf ball. Right shoulder going down, left leg extending, 
gets you to slightly hit up on the golf ball. But if you do anything too much in the golf swing, it can hurt you big time. So for me, I had that right shoulder drop back and it was more so just my upper body completely moving behind really early in that downswing. And what it would do, it would stall out my rotation. Because if I do that move extra early, I now can't turn. It's gonna put too much tension on the back and it certainly did hurt my back. So from there, I was just losing tons of club head speed going through there and I was adding loft from there as well. Because the only way I could get to the ball from there would be throwing the hands at it, adding loft and then ultimately hitting too spinny of some drives there. So as soon as I could keep myself a little bit more central with my upper body on top of my lower body, have appropriate amounts of side bend, and then straight away, I started hitting the ball tremendously. One straighter, more consistent, which is great, but also I picked up a ton of yardage, and here's the drill I did to fix it. So here's a drill, a long alignment stick. So I'm using the swing plate here with the extension pole attachment because what I did with this is I had this. So the stick is just about a few fingers outside the right side of my head. And if I started to have any slight little bit of side bend, I would hit it. But of course, if I'm side bending at the right time going through impact, I wouldn't hit that stick. So it gave me feedback every single time. So if I was here and I was like, okay, I don't want to hit that with my head and then I'll be in that better spot, not excessively side bending. And I put in an absolutely ridiculous amount of reps in with this and then it got into my golf swing. So this is where using something like an avoidance drill like this is, is absolutely crucial to getting certain moves out of your swing. This is such a good training aid as well. If you want one of these, I've got a discount code in the description of this video. The swing plate, absolutely amazing. But just having this here really encouraged me to move correctly. So you can imagine, uh, I could work on all these little bits in one go with this here as well. I could get my tee height, of course, my ball position, do our little procedure to get that good ball position. There we go. And so many of you out there, guys, you just have a ball position so far back. It's gonna feel like the ball's in front of you almost, but that's just because it's been so far back for you. It's gotta feel weird. Nothing feels right when you first start off doing it with a golf swing. It will feel weird. So from then, of course, I could still work on getting that left heel slamming back down and mid back swing or late back swing and then just don't hit this with my head. And I can work on all of them in one go. Brilliant. So my things here that I avoided to become a bigger hitter and go from hitting it short to hitting it long. Absolutely, you might have some of these in your golf swing. Have a look at your swing after you've watched this video, of course, get onto a driving range or into a net if you've got one and start hitting balls, looking at these points. If you've got them in there as well, start working on these drills and it's gonna help you big time. But especially that first one, guys, you can all do this and then tee that ball up. Especially if you're a senior golfer, for example, do not tee the ball down. You're missing out on so much yardage. It's something I'm changing all the time for students on Skillist and students when I was an in-person coach back in the day. And that was getting that tee teed up higher, ball position more forward. Those students will feel uncomfortable every single time. They'll have a little moan about how uncomfortable they feel, but then straight away, they'll start hitting the ball longer and straighter. So have a look at those. Left heel, getting that down on the ground and making sure you're not having any excessive movements like excessive side bend. You don't want to be robbing yourself of speed. You want to be swinging efficiently so you can be maximizing your speed and doing things like ball position and tee height to maximize your ball speed also. So this is the low hanging fruit. Grab it. Don't do anything really complicated in your swing and thinking that's going to be it. It's always the low hanging fruit. If there was an apple above this net here where there's an apple tree, I will grab it for the video's sake, but there isn't any apples at the moment. So if you enjoyed this video, click that like button for more golf instruction just like this, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell button too to be notified every time I put out a video.